Good morning and welcome to a look at AI writing tools that are going to help you to improve your writing, maybe make it a bit more efficient, and I'd say probably also help you to cut down the amount of time you're spending when it comes to writing, because some of us love writing, some of us really don't love it at all. My name is Dante St. James. We'll get underway and get that screen shared and explore four different writing tools that I make use of and a, a, probably an extended look at the one that I use the most, which I think is definitely my favorite one. Let's get underway. First of all, this is brought to you by Business Station and Digital Solutions Program, a Australian government initiative with the Australian Small Business Advisory Services Program. It's a, a great tool. If you can get underway, businessstation.com.au is where you start that. Although the, the fact that you're on this uh, particular webinar means you're probably already very aware of this program. We're also re recording this this afternoon, uh, sorry, this morning, so it's still this morning, uh, on, and you're going to be putting it on YouTube. So it'll be on YouTube on my channel a bit later tonight, which is on my name, Dante St. James, or you can search on the uh, business station channel as well. And that should be on there in the next couple of days as well. So if you get to a point where one of those things you don't remember completely, or you try to remember the name of the tool or the way we used it, just uh, look on the YouTube channel of either business station myself, and you'll be able to find that too. What we're going to look at today is why these tools are popular and, and what they really do. So how they really do help out, what they do and don't do as well. Although that changes every single week. There's a new feature that comes out that just blows me away. We're going to look at uh, four different ones. I haven't got all four listed there, but the first one is simplemarketing.ai. The second one is jasper.ai. The third one is Write Sonic, which is my personal favorite that I use all the time. And then the fourth one is one called Writer, R-Y-T-R. Um, it's one of the newer kids on the block, but it is quite good as well. So I'll be looking at them, some of those. And then, you know, the pricing and whether you can get on board with some of those for free. Some of them have free trials. Some of them have a free layer. So if you're only using it once or twice a month, you may not even have to pay for these at all. And then might have a look at, so understanding the workflow of how my, one of these might work. And I'll show you my particular workflow as I go and take um, you know, blog posts that I want to write that are going to come from a an idea generator that I then bring over to write Sonic. And then that I then make changes to. So making sure it's got my voice in there and that it's factually correct. Because uh, AI is very good at picking out a lot of things, but sometimes... It doesn't really go with the fact checking very well. So what these tools do and why they're so popular comes down to, I guess, the fact that they promise a lot of efficiency, a lot of effectiveness to cut down the amount of time you're spending and to allow you to pump out a little bit more content than you are now. Computer generated writing is created using what's called natural language processing tools. Uh, tools. It's called GPT-3, which is a uh, particular kind of machine learning or AI. Um, all the um, AI writing tools are, are based on the same thing. So it's just the same way. If you've noticed DALI, which is the um, the uh, tool which designs AI art or AI graphics and images based upon limited inputs, um, that's under the DALI um, code. But this is under GPT-3, which is the writing tools. And now different um, companies will have different ways of doing that. The GPT-3 is a free open source tool that they use to uh, in order to do this. But what they do is have different ways, I guess, of, of, of how much they scan the internet, how much they do with plagiarism checking, and then the actual applications they have in there. And you'll see a number of very different ways we look at this. Some of them are very good at blogs. Some of them are very good at product descriptions for e-commerce. Others are very good for writing social media um, uh, posts. Whatever the, your particular thing is, um, that's where we'll kind of look at a few of those and, and what the different tools are good at as opposed to not so good at so you've got to first i guess decide what it is you want to write about or what you want to write as so it could be a blog post for instance you want to run an article for your website or for a an online blog of someone else's so you might say okay that's what i want to write about but what is the topic i want to write about all of these tools will have you have to get a topic in there. Now I'll show you my workflow later, how I use um, a couple of sources of information to get what my topics are going to be. So I write a blog post once or twice a week. Sometimes I'm really, really going hard. I'll write five of them in a week because I'm looking for particular search results from Google for a particular topic. And then you're saying, so you want to say, okay, well, I want to write about this particular topic, but what kind of content do I need? Is it a social media post? Is it a blog post? Is it rewriting some of the content on my website? 
website that's describing my bit, my products and services? Is it a product description? That kind of thing. And then you add a bunch of parameters. So the parameters um, sometimes are cooked into what they call recipes on some of these tools. Uh, sometimes they are just referred to as templates um, where they'll say, look, you can add in these following parameters. I'll actually bring up fields and say, what is the opening line? What is the product features you want to highlight? Um, where can we find more information on that? And it goes away with that set of instructions and forms your write, your written parameters. That um, some of them are uh, require less input than others, and you'll see what I mean a little bit later up. So let's just say, for instance, in one particular case, you want to set up a new beginners yoga class. Um, so it's going to be a Facebook ad, and the the main areas of that you want to have included in the ad will be, okay, it's a new beginner's yoga class and it's air conditioned and it's led by Jenny Young, who's done this before. What will happen is the GPT-3 or the, the AI of it will go away and form a, um, a Facebook ad style of writing with those parameters in it, which is new beginner's yoga class in air conditioning led by Jenny Young. And it'll take that and not just say, hey, we're starting a new beginner's yoga class in air conditioned comfort led by Jenny Young. It'll create something a bit more well creative around that a little bit more content than just the facts that are shown there so it may come out with for instance this so this is um in the right sonic tool that i use so it then writes a post about that so if you're new to yoga and i'm looking at the second one you new, new to yoga and want an easy to follow and not too strenuous yoga exercises classes for you it's headed by jenny young who has over 20 years of yoga experience bring your own mat and towel the center is fully air conditioned invest in you so you can see how it's then going and and creating these options now in this case there's three options there you can pick any one of those you can pick all of them if you want you can save them and tag them <laughs> excuse me, so that you can use them later on for different kinds of posts. But the idea is to cut down the amount of time. If you're not some of those like writing gurus who just like wax out content constantly one after the other, after the other, then this is a really good opportunity for you to be able to, um, cut down that time. So basically you put in a few different parameters that must be said, and then it goes and writes the content for you. And when it writes this content, it goes and checks it against millions of different sources of information through Google and other search engines, blogs, and all sorts of RSS feeds to see if this has been written before. It tries to write something unique. Now there's only so many unique ways you can write about yoga, air conditioned classes, and Jenny Young. So it finds the three that it will not show up as being plagiaristic or copying of any other one post what it does do though it understands that this is a yoga class it understands that it's for beginners it understands things like that you it's very likely that when it gets out there and scans these items that you really do need to bring your own mat and towel because of you know health reasons and the fact that beginners don't want a really strenuous yoga exercise they want something that's a little bit more calm and, and a very very slow paced thing so in this case it makes a lot of decisions based upon the information you've got and mashes that all together gets all the information back and then puts it into something that's readable by humans now sometimes it's a lot less readable by humans than others it might seem like a little bit like oh that does not feel very friendly it feels very factual but sometimes like in this case things like start your yoga journey with our beginners yoga class talking about journeys and pathways and, and you feel like man this thing really knows how to write for people so what it does again searches for similar content across the web whether that's social posts um for instance like for instance uh social posts on something like uh facebook are not searchable on google but social posts from linkedin are searchable on google if if the the author is allowed this their, their their posts to be um able to be looked at in google it then takes all that and processes it into something new and unique that isn't the same as anything else on the web and checks it immediately to see if it fits plagiarism. Now, the plagiarism, there's lots of plagiarism checkers out there. Um, Grammarly, for instance, which helps correct your grammar and your spelling as you're writing things in Word and online. Um, it uses a very similar process where it looks at all of this and gives it a percentage mark for plagiarism. And if that plagiarism mark goes up to about, you know, 15, 10, 10 to 15%, it starts to make changes. They no, I've got to make this more unique. And as it makes it more unique and that plagiarism count goes down a little bit more all the time, then it gives you that range of options says okay i've got three options here who mark all the parameters you said that is something completely new and has passed our plagiarism check and that's where you go okay great which one am i going to choose that's the one i'm going to go with
So that's how they generally work. So for instance, um, some real world examples of real businesses I've worked with in the past who have used these particular um, AI copywriters is my state bank is a Tasmanian bank. And uh, they had an ad agency copywriter writing their stuff for years and years and years. So what we found is that there was a certain level of performance of conversions that came from those copywritten ads by a person. They then moved over to another AI copywriter. I don't know which one it was though, because they didn't tell me, but I advised them to do it. They moved across to that AI copywriter and then had a twice the, the conversion rate. Now that was amazing turnaround for them just for the fact that someone wrote something, um, someone who wrote it from a, a human point of view, it didn't perform. They wrote it from the AI only. It got twice the, 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 um, the, the conversions. Then finally, what they did is they would write it using the AI tool, but then they'd edit it later on. So they just go, okay, this is great. Let's make it slightly more human. So they just edit a couple of words, um, maybe swap some sentences around. So it felt a bit more like a story. And that had another massive increase. In fact, it took them up another 30%. So by the time they got to the end of this whole experience, they had three times the amount of conversions per dollar spent than what they had previously, just simply by using tools that took a lot of the the um the human mistakes out of it and the human emotions out of it and just wrote what needed to be written to get attention and to get the right kind of response from it so these these particular tools a lot of them are written with the the, the purpose of getting people to do things to take action so if it depends in some of the tools you'll see later and very soon as we go into them we'll show you that you can choose what an outcome will be or a mood or a style um, whether your objective is to get conversions or just to get people to read something uh, we'll see what that all looks like very shortly but there's different ways that you can sort of lead towards what your outcome needs to be uh, with a particular mobile reseller, um, which is um, actually just been uh, acquired. So they're not around anymore. They're under someone else now, but um, when it was written by myself, um, just by my own copywriting skills, you know, we, we had about like three out of 10, um, conversions. So, which is not a bad conversion rate, but for a high intent area. So people were specifically looking for us and for our mobile plans, then we should have got a little bit more. So then when we worked it over to an AI copywriting, let's let the copywriting service do it for us. Then it was up to eight out of 10. So eight out of every 10 people coming in, looking for that specific mobile plan for, and looking specifically for us converted to a sale which was an incredible result. However, a little bit different this time, when I took the AI and then edited it, it actually dropped back down to about five out of every 10. So it was a really big difference in the fact that it, uh, I actually made it worse by adding to it. So I went back to, again, to going back to just the AI writing it, and we got back up to those higher uh, conversion rates. So it just goes to show that there's no one way of doing this. It's a lot of experimentation, like anything in the digital world. But then you ask yourself, will AI then replace the need for you to write at all? And I'd say probably not entirely. There's still going to be cases where you need to add things to it, especially recently as Google has released their latest um, update to their algorithm, which is looking for the patterns that emerge when things are written by AI copywriters, because they know that that's actually a bit of a danger. So what happens is that um, AI copywriters are given instructions to write very usually to increase SEO results. So increasing search results for people who are searching for very specific things. Um, so the patterns that emerge is a lot of what they call keyword stuffing. So there's a, a keyword that you're looking for that shows up on just a, a little bit too much to be normal writing from someone. And Google is now looking less at that keyword stuffing, how relevant things are, right? To, to, to turn and flip it on its head and looking more for things that are helpful for the person who is looking. So not just looking at the intention of the person who's searching, but also the helpfulness. There's, a, there's an index they have now for help and helpfulness for that content. So will AI completely relate, uh, replace that? Well, it'll replace probably a lot of it, but it won't replace the that human element where we have to add a little bit of a storytelling component. That said, there are storytelling recipes in some of these or storytelling templates that really do go a long way to, to that humanization, what we're writing. But if we were looking for that humanization, we definitely wouldn't be looking at AI copywriting tools because basically we're trying to save a bit of time. We're trying to get a bit more efficiency in there and we're trying to spend less time writing and more time selling, right? So if it does replace copywriters, that's not such a bad thing. There'll always be room for certain people in copywriting. What the tools do 
mostly and do well is deliver ideas and outlines against what it is you want to say or what you want to write about. If you want to write about beginner's yoga classes, it will deliver you a bunch of outlines that start the process for you. And then they might, you know, even a sentence by sentence. So there's like a, a feature called write along in GPT-3, which allows you to write a sentence and it writes the next sentence. You write the next sentence, it writes the next sentence. So it's also, it's guessing where you're going to go with this content. Um, in the case of Write Sonic, it'll deliver ideas or it could deliver um, outlines of different parts of it. Now, this is where it sort of splits a little bit. You can produce a first draft by this by going straight all the way through and i write sonic does this uh jasper is doing it as well um and writer is doing it now too where they'll actually write the entire blog post for you it'll be about a you know up to a 1500 word kind of uh, blog post which is pretty phenomenal to have that many words written for you without you doing anything but putting a few parameters in but it really is a first draft Lately, though, some really clever techniques are being used. Right, Sonic again does this really, really well, is by writing the whole damn blog post for you. So it's a readable, postable, even adds in a photo. Not that the photos are ever particularly on point. Sometimes they're actually completely off the off the mark. But they'll even throw in a photo for you. So you can like copy and paste it in, go to your blog, dump it in. The problem here is, though, though, it really is based on a first draft it may not be correct the information that's in there so it does require you to check it and it also may not be um, it may repeat something so i had one the other day which actually repeated the same line about five or six times during the entire blog post and it was like suspiciously robotic in the way it did that so i thought well it's just bringing up this fact all the time without showing it within context of the rest of the stuff it's talking about. So I went, well, okay, I'm not going to use that line or I might just refresh it or just replace it with some words of my own. So what it doesn't really do is that click once you get a blog post out the end, which is completely usable and completely, um, you know, doesn't need editing just about every time it's going to need some kind of editing. What it does do is saves you time particularly if you're someone who's not pretty good, particularly great at writing. Uh, it gives you pretty flexible content ideas. So it won't give you just one story. It'll give you a few stories to choose from. And before it goes and builds that whole story out for you, it gives you little points along the way where you go, is this okay? Yeah, it is. Or is this okay? No, change this. It gives you that thing where it's like repetitive tasks, like writing things like uh, product descriptions or writing like uh, about you content on your website or writing social media posts, which you may not be particularly comfortable with. It will help you out with those repetitive tasks. So it may not be a replacement for a virtual assistant, but it is taking you a long way towards it. And one of the things it does too, it takes out that writer's block. So if you've got the, okay, I've got the idea, that I've, I've got a question I want answered, an idea that I want to write about, but I just don't feel creative today. It helps break that. It'll give you then enough to work on so that you can then break through the writer's block and be able to comment on and add to and edit what's given back to you. So the key thing is there, I think you understand that it doesn't generally do the whole article, but it can um i wouldn't trust any of these tools to write the whole article i think sometimes they are you know without really checking them writing through and going mm, is this really what i want to say and it's also not particularly good at writing particular styles of writing some of them have lots of languages uh, i know that particularly and write sonic and jasper will write in several languages very heavily weighted towards european languages um, but that's starting to become more common where you're starting to see chinese language um, thai language uh, bahaza starting to come in through there uh, hindi as well but when i say the specific styles there's only one i've seen that really kind of nails the whole idea of the style or the tone of the writing so that's where um jasper does that very well which is done to understand casual writing witty writing clever writing um academic writing formal writing uh conversational writing so it's got these different styles that all start to produce based upon a whole bunch of ideas inside itself of what is casual what is formal what is academic etc so it's not going to do everything, but it gets pretty damn close to it. Uh, it's just up to you whether you can live with the fact that, you know, nothing really is truly original when it comes in here, even though it doesn't plagiarize by its very type of work it does. It takes ideas from everybody else and just mashes them together. 
it does need proofreading. So you will need to proofread. You can't just click a button and go, that's fine. You could, but Google's going to pick up on that really, really soon. It's going to see the patterns and emerge when it comes to GPT-3 um, copywriting. Um, sometimes it feels like there's no emotion to it. And rightly so, it's AI. It doesn't have emotions. So that sort of emotional heartstrings tugging kind of language that we use as humans, it hasn't quite perfected that yet, but it's getting very close. And there can be some really awkward phrasing. So for instance, it'll go, um, the beginner's yoga studio is a perfect place for beginners who are in yoga to begin their journey towards yoga in a studio. Like the phrasing can be sometimes a little bit too, what we call keyword stuffing, stuffing those keywords too many times into something. So uh, will this sort of, if this is a legitimate thing that people ask, if they use an AI tool, will it take over their computer, insert viruses and all that? No, because this is a third-party piece of software that works on upon a website. So you sign into the website and you do it all within the browser. It has no interaction with your computer at all, apart from you know the text that it produces at the end that you can then transfer and copy and paste into something like Word. None of these tools are designed with what is called general artificial intelligence. They're all designed with very specific AI. And the difference really is a general artificial intelligence is what we kind of grew up with in Terminator, where these, this, is, this is computers that can think. They can think for themselves, have um, emotions, they have feelings, they have um, agendas, uh, which they um, have a general intelligence, much like human. They're very much like us. They react in the same way you do. Or the matrix is a good example of that, which is general AI, where the machines finally became aware of themselves and they were finally aware that they were aware of themselves and therefore could make decisions in the same way that the human brain would. That doesn't exist and possibly never will because it's just not something which is what uh, computers in a series of ones and zeros and decisions of yes, no can really gather and capture. It may happen one day. I don't think it'll be in our lifetime. What we're looking at is what is called narrow artificial intelligence. So it's where something is designed to work only on Apple or only on Google, or it's only going to work within Facebook advertising, but does nothing else. Or it's an AI writer, which allows us to write material within specific parameters. It doesn't then go, well, I'm a writing tool, but therefore I think I'm also going to become a decision-making tool when I'm out in, in a supermarket shopping. They don't jump over because they're designed for completely different purposes. So general AI and narrow AI, very, very different things. So now we're going to jump into the first of our tools, which is called simplemarketing.ai, built by a couple of girls here in Australia who I met at a conference a long, long time ago. Um, they are based in New South Wales, I think, and they were able to come up with an idea of using GPT-3 to build their own AI marketing tool. So I'm just going to open this up. You can see that now. This is logged in to simplemarketing.ai. And you can see it's got a limited amount of stuff, which it does. Now it does have a content schedule. So you can so get an idea of things that you can write about that will just go into different parts of your, so you can post it from there and then it allows you to then go, okay, copy and post this post off into your particular, um, uh, your particular uh, social media place. It has a very limited number of things that it does though. One of the things it can do is go, well, let's form what a blog starter would be. So the blog starter will not write the blog for you, but what it will do if we go in here is start the process for you. So I'm going to put in my key phrases. Um, it also has um, uh, voices too that can do this. So I'm going to start writing the key phrases, which are going to be about, so let's just say um, Apple uh, iPhone versus Android. I'm going to put in another phrase, which will be um, usability, um, upgrade, upgradable, um, ecosystem, uh, something else like price, the price between the two, availability, and we'll go popularity. So in those three or four key phrases, I'm going to generate some content. So each generation takes like one credit from the 45 credits you get for free as part of this. So I don't pay for this. So what it's doing now is going and taking my words and building an idea of a blog post around that. So all you have to do is have a basic idea of what it is you want to write about. 
some of the issues you may think need to be mentioned in that and it goes now and starts it so look at this it's actually forming a blog starter for you i've been an iphone user since 2007 on an android user i've got tired of the iphone being so closed and also the fact that i had to pay a hundred dollars more for an apple device with similar functionality that's one a second one is when it comes to smartphone there's no question the iphone is at the top of the heap so how does it fit in with the whole open versus closed debate so it's actually writing the beginning of an entire blog for you so it's not necessarily writing the whole blog for you, but it's got a bit of, it's got a bit of spark to it. So a few months ago, I actually bought an Android phone. I was certain I was going to hate it, but I liked it. So it's got a lot of, you know, feel to it. We can keep going down. It's giving us more and more ideas as we keep going of writing this. We can go then and generate it again if none of those really make sense. But this is giving you a really good idea. In fact, it's even throwing in some ideas for photos for you, which come from free um, open source uh, photo galleries like Pexels, Pixabay, and all those. So you can select pictures to go into it and it'll insert them into that. So you can go, okay, I want to download that article, downloads it for you as a Word document that you can then just copy into your your website in which way you like so immediately it's got a mood it's got a feel that's all in there that allows you to then go okay this is what i'm going to start writing because i'm writing about these particular ideas all these ideas are included in this blurb that it started off with and some of the blurbs are longer than others but it gives you a really good starter um, you know, some of these things are actually not true. So the new Android system, much like a computer, which allows an SD card, very, very few of any Android phones allow the use of an SD card. So sometimes you're going to have to look in there and go, okay, I've got to like check the facts on this kind of thing. If you know lots about this topic, you won't have a problem with that because you'll see, oh yeah, definitely need to update that. And like it's saying, I'm considering canceling my iPhone 4 and getting a Galaxy S2. The iPhone 4 was what? 10 years ago or something like that the galaxy s2 i used to own one so that was a very long time ago so definitely not up-to-date stuff and you might say you check spelling as well so the z in customizable there for us it's a s so as you see it doesn't it's not perfect but it can produce a really good interesting um way of presenting the topic you're looking for i'm going to go back to the getting started and we're going to then start to look at some other things it'll do for you like for instance, Facebook post. So we want the Facebook post to be about, let's just say um, handmade soap, um, natural ingredients. Uh, it's going to be organic, um, homemade, um, oops, limited edition, um, rosemary and cucumber uh, scent. So I can then go make me a, a variety of ideas for a Facebook post based upon those in, those bits of information. So I turn around simple, simple marketing.ai. We're down to 44 points now. We've just generated again. So it'll be down to 43 soon. So as you can see, you get a fair bit of value for money out of a free thing. They've also inserted this really bad image in there. But what they've done here is I've been making handmade soap for years. I tend to start a lot of habits and pass them on my kids at a young age. I'm a DIY kind of gal. So it's telling a story about it. Um, it tells a story about, um, I was excited when my daughter said she needed a bar of soap for a friend. She asked for rosemary and cucumber and I was happy to make her one. So there you go. So it's, it's actually writing even a whole bunch of tags that you can insert in there. It's got info at Noodle and Judy, which is basically just taking a, a bit of random information from somewhere. That's one. There's another one down here. I'm excited to announce my handmade rosemary and cucumber handmade soap is ready to ship. Um, Father's Day gift ideas from Northridge Trading Post. So it's actually taken some ideas from a real place and going, okay, let's rewrite what they've provided, which is something that's a little bit similar. So it's writing a lot of these things for you that you can just copy, paste them, and then update them to something that's going to be like you. Don't know how um, great these particular... Uh, <laughs> these particular photos are to match what we're looking for but you know there's like handmade candles you got um like a lot of homeliness on homemade kind of stuff handmade soaps there um rose from the rosemary i guess so you've got some ideas in there that make it really work for you we'll take one more look at simple marketing.ai and see what we can find so let's look for something like a um a thank you email to your clients so what we want to do is say thanks for shopping at um let's just call it uh gail's beauty uh, beauty the key phrase we want to go is um happy to um what we do you will enjoy the service 
uh, we want to talk about really about um, easy booking system online at galesbeauty.com.au. Uh, we'll also put in there um, always looking for feedback. And finally, if you have questions, please contact us. Now we go, okay, those are the things we must include in this email. Let's see what it does with our one generation going down to 42 points now. Turn the wheel, turn the wheel, see what we come up with. Okay, immediately. We value business. Please give us a review. It only takes a second, your feedback. So it's going, okay, that could be a really good thank you email. Thank you very much for shopping at Gales Beauty. We're happy that you're enjoying the service provided at our website. We always look for your feedback and questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at, and then it gives you an idea of that. Better than the rest. Some people call it a salon. Other people call it a beauty lounge. I just call it Gales Beauty. So it's amazing ways that they're writing it in very, very different um, styles and feels and that it just takes away a lot of that writer's block and does it for you now remembering that this is actually a free tool you can sign up for free i've just written all those things i got blog ideas i got a facebook post idea and an email idea for three points and i've got 45 points that i can use every month for free so this is a really good starting point i think for people who are looking to just get some of those savings without perhaps using a really um advanced tool that's going to go into a lot more details and go into a lot more depth so the price wise i'll just bring this up here uh, present there we go so the free plan gives you those 45 credits. Well, it says five credits per month, but I've obviously, you know, I've used three of those. I've, I've accumulated a lot of credits over the months. So I, that's why I was up to 45. So I've five, nine, nine months I've been on there and I haven't used it very much. So I've accumulated quite a lot of credits. Um, it lets you use that, all of this stuff. But if you want to use more, then it starts at $17 a month, which is US, even though it's an Australian product, it is US dollars, but it allows you then to go, you know, go and get those 20 credits per month. So that's going to give you, like it says here, between 60 and 200 pieces of content based upon what the length is. So if you're generating blogs, it's usually going to be a lot more um, length. So it's going to cost you a bit more in credits. 17 a month's not too bad, but hell, start with a free one just to get used to it, to something that you want to try out and see how it works for you. Our second tool is called Jasper at jasper.ai. Now, Jasper is one of the big superstars of this field. They're certainly the people who have sort of nailed their marketing really well, and they've got a lot of people who really, really love what they do. Not my favorite tool, but it does have some really good features. The other thing is, too, it's got what we call recipes. So these recipes are, it will write an entire blog post in five minutes. Um, it has the idea factory. It lets you show off easy ways of generating great ideas, Facebook ads, product reviews, what we call the hero's journey, certain writing styles. Um, it's got a few of those recipes, but it's also got just plain templates. So recipes are more complex. Templates are just what you actually want to have in the background. So the AIDA framework over here is a writing style for marketing, which gets attention, um, works on the interest of the client to maybe read more, creates a level of desire with them and gives them some kind of action. Blog post topic ideas. The PAS problem agitate solution framework is a great social media posting framework I use. And let's maybe have a go at this. Now we've got, um, I'm on a, a free uh, trial of this for their, for their starter edition. So in the PAS framework, so they don't have a free layer. They have a free trial for five days. You got to make sure that you turn off your credit card after that, because you don't want to have them charging you, which is about $49 a month, uh, basically to use their content, 49 US at that. So let's just say my company name is, we're going to say Gail's Beauty again, Gail's Beauty Salon. Um, the product description we want to have in there is that it's, um, a um making you feel like brand new confidence with your body and skin um using let's just say i don't know what's a brand that works in skincare maybe dermalogica dermalogica products um we're going to also have in there that it's um located close to the train station at let's say um Nunawading in Victoria um 
and we want to make it so not so much witty i think a tone of voice is going to be friendly so this is where they do very well they actually have this whole tone of voice idea so you put in there's a friendly helpful tone of voice i'm going to say feminine as well and it will actually bear that in mind when it goes to generate this content so let's just see with a little bit of information we put in there how it's going to create a problem agitate solution um, for that so generate the ai content let's go What's it going to do with that little bit of information I've given it? So it starts off problem. We all know that feeling good about our appearance is important, but sometimes it's hard to know where to start. Then it says, okay, the agitate part. It can be really overwhelming when you're trying to figure out what beauty products to use, what salon to go to, and how often you should be getting treatments. Gal's Beauty Salon is here to help. We only use demological products, which are proven to give you the best results. Plus we're located close to the strain station. So it's easy for you to get here. That is brilliant. So when you would use this in a social post, you just take out the words problem, agitate and solution and you have got a social media post ready to go straight away so the little bit of information we need to put in there it turns it into a really nice output now you, it's saying okay these two a lot of people feel very insecure about their appearance so this is giving you two different outputs here that you can try with now like i said though jasper is not free it does give you five days so you can go in there and just write it crap ton of different posts and move from there but that's a very common marketing schema to be right like a format to be using just take out the word problem agitate and solution you've got a really beautifully written social media post there that's ready to go and copy and paste in for you so we'll go back to our templates you look at some more over here we've got a whole bunch of them so let's look at maybe um a creative story this will be interesting so the plot is going to be that um carl is a single man living in the suburbs. He has no partner, but has a friendly dog, has a dog who is his best friend. He enjoys playing chess, but um, because he is vision impaired, he may not he struggles to play with others. One day he meets someone who completely changes his view on life and his part in it. I just made that up off the top of my head. I'm, I tend to be a little bit, you know, a little bit um, creative like that, but I'm going to use a dramatic tone of voice. And generate a story so it's generating a story about carl living in the suburbs no partner has a dog um has a best friend is his dog he likes playing chess but his vision impaired and one day he meets someone who completely changes his view on life and his part in it so let's see what it does what is the story outline is going to give us um about carl Carl had always been a bit of a loner. He lived in the suburbs with his dog and spent most of his time playing chess by himself. He was great at the game, but because of his vision impairment, it was difficult for him to play against others. One day, he met someone who completely changed his life. The stranger was charming and lively, and Carl found himself drawn to her instantly. They began talking more and more, and soon they were spending all their time together. The stranger showed Carl that there was so much more life than just playing chess by himself. She introduced him to new friends, exciting activities, and even love. Without realizing it, Carl had finally found a partner. This has just written a story for us. This is amazing. It's well written, easy to follow, follows a lot of those rules of keeping the sentences to you know, as close to under 20 words as you can, short paragraphs that are very easy to consume. This is phenomenal. This changes the whole idea of you being able to do storytelling. All I gave it was just a little bit of a, I gave them a person, a background, an interest, and um, a turning point. And that turning point was that one day he meets someone who completely changes the view on life. Now I said dramatic. I'm going to change that to uh, witty. So see what it does with that same story, but with a more witty approach. And you'll start to see exactly how it changed it. There you go. Hey, you want to play chess? Carl looked up from his game with spot to see a young man, no more than 20 years old, looking down at him with a friendly smile. I'm sorry, Carl said, shaking his head. I can't really see very well. How about that? Oh, that is just phenomenal what these are able to do and whilst this one is a 49 dollar us a month tool holy crap it does tell a great story doesn't it plenty of other templates in there you might want to do something that's uh around um, your google ads your google ads headline a facebook ads what we call a sentence expander so you get a sentence expander is where you've got a bit of an idea but you want to get a bit more so you want to be excited we'll take that so excited um again a few words in this sentence are going to be 
I never thought that I um, thought that I would be a writer. I just never thought I had the talent. So it's going to be excited, excited tone, and hopeful. We have a hopeful in there as well. Let's generate a story. So it's going to expand this sentence out and make it into more of a story. I never thought I'd be a writer. I just never thought I had the talent, but now I'm excited to share my stories with the world and hopefully that people will enjoy them. So it started to expand that into something you can use as a post, as a, as a story you be sharing with someone, something in an email newsletter even. It just gives you those prompts when you're not a great writer to be able to do that a little bit more. So that's Jasper. Jasper, I think is a great tool. It's certainly improved a lot. Um, I hadn't used it a lot because it's so expensive. There's a much cheaper things out there. I've got 9,000 9, credits or something, but it does run out um, in five days because then I have to start paying. So I'm not going to be doing that. What I will do though, is take us to the next tool, which is one called, oh, sorry, there's our pricing. We're going to look at that too. So sorry, Jasper starts at 29 per month, which gives you 20,000 words and gives you all those different copywriting skills and recipes and all that. The 29 a month, which is um, US dollars. So have a look at that. It may be worth your while at 29. It's come down from 49, which is a lot better. What that does, the sliding scale gives you more words. So the more words you want to get per month, then you're going to find, okay, I probably need to pay a little bit more. Just about all of us will get the $29 a month. It starts at 29 and gives you 20,000 words. That's the lowest point. Next up, writer. Writer is a bit of a different one. It is a content generator, yes. It is a writing assistant, yes. But it presents a little bit differently. So this is the, the what you do when you sign into Writer. It allows you to be able to choose over on the left the language you want to play in. So it does have quite a few languages you want to play with, like Hindi, Japanese, Korean. So it does have a few more languages. You can then select the tone. And this is one thing I do like about writer it is very very um it's 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 able to pick its tone and be very good about it so enthusiastic is going to be the tone i want to write a um i want i want to make a brand name look at this we're going to make a brand name so the brand name is going to be enthusiastic and it's going to be based around um homemade cosmetics made uh can't spell it right cosmetics uh, made with natural ingredients and organic botanicals. Organic botanicals. So it's going to come up with, I want, to, I want three variants with lots of creativity. So I'm going to come up and say, give me a brand name for a business that I've got, which is going to be making these natural ingredients, organic botanicals, handmade co cosmetics. So look at that, green root nuggets, probably not great. Happy green skin, maybe. Cream of the crop, that's quite cool. Safe and sound skincare, undercover botanical. So it's gone and taken all those things like uh, pure rosemary, botanical gardens, bare natural, nude botanicals. It's given us a whole lot of really great ideas for brand names. So let's just say if you are someone who's working in... Um, NLP hypnotherapy, um, weight loss, um, confidence. Uh, you want to maybe um, find a partner. I want three variants, and the opt. I'm going to look for not enthusiastic, for maybe uh, humble, inspirational, an inspirational brand name for a an NLP hypnotherapist who works in weight loss, confidence building, and finding a partner. Let's have a look what that's going to be. Let's see what it comes up with. There we go. Trimpsy, an arrow, mindset, namaste about it. That's kind of cute. Giddy, giddy, yes up. Giddy, giddy, ASAP. Win weight, NL Papex. So some of them are a little bit off. Leader sesh, fit minds. That's kind of cool. Proud weight. Um, love doctor, matchmaker, anti-gravity, image, Im image arrays. So some of them are like way out there and not really that great, but some of them are like really kind of cool. And arrow, I think it's really cool. Um, namaste about it. I think that's very cute. So it's giving us ideas for all these different things. So that's just for that. If we go back to the beginning now and we've emptied it all out, what we're going to do now is look for a blog idea and outline. So we're going to write a blog that's all about, um, I was going to get around the well being. Let's do something else, such as uh, um, speech therapy. 
So the primary keyword is speech therapy. So I want a few variants for a blog idea. Speech therapy for children. Let's have a look at what it does. Now, inspirational, I might make this more about an informative article. Let's write it out. See what it comes up with with outlines for writing a blog about speech therapy for children. There's three different variations of it. Writing, writing, writing. Here we go. So it gives you some, you know, some little ideas about, um, you could write about uh, a comprehensive guide to speech therapy for children, how it can help. Gives you the outlines. So you can then go, yep, that's going to be my, my sections of my blog. And I'm going to write about these things in there. Or five tips for, for improving a child's speech after a stroke. That's a really interesting one. Very, very specific. So it does get very specific. Five speech therapy techniques for children that elevate your parenting skills. So it's given us now these ideas to work from. So I can work in here and go, I'll write my introduction over the top of those keywords. I'm going to write my technique one over those keywords. It's going to be about listening skills and listening exercises. So it prompts you for what to write. Very good for if you are someone who is actually quite good at writing, but you don't really get the structure. You're not great with, with the structure. This is a really good technique. Introduction, three points, and a conclusion is a very common copywriting skill to use. And I think it's personally the one I like the most. Uh, I mean, it's what I write all my blogs on as well. And I'm going to show you next in the other tools how I do that. So in this one, Writer, they do have a free version which you can use, uh, which uh, has some limitations on it, of course. You see that PAS copywriting framework that I had, the problem agitate solution is in there. Um, ads, Google search ads, interview questions for job interviews, writing a job description, um, landing page and website copy as well, or post and caption ideas. There's lots of different ones over here. I really do encourage you to use Writer um, and to get an idea for it because in price-wise, it is going to give you 5,000 characters a month on the free plan. It'll give you only 30 of the use cases it has. So, but um, a 30 plus, sorry, which is the same as all of them really. So they've got the use cases of those different styles. So we're talking about these things here all these ideas, video descriptions, story plots, song lyrics. That's crazy. You can write a song. Let's make a song. Um, it is a hopeful song about love in a rural area um, where people don't really know each other. And I'm just going into silliness, but let's go one variant of... Um, of a very earnest song that might be the country music for us. Let's see what it comes up with. This will be interesting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Let's see what it writes. There we go. So there's a song. The chorus, do you know how much I love you? And do you know how good it feels to be around you? What are we doing now that we don't have each other? How am I going to get through this without you? That's a little bit, like, a little bit desperate in there. But, you know, I found love that wasn't so full of doubt. I found love and it's for you. I don't know it's taken much of these importance in there. It's just said it's a love song, basically. And it's just gone, yeah, okay. There's not much in there about a rural area, but you can add more to it. It gives you basically a bit of a, a an outline of how you can write a love song if that's what you really want to do. So as we've looked at right now, I want to jump over to Write Sonic, which is um, let's just from over here so you can see that. So Write free plan again, five thousand characters a month. Go for it, just use it for free. It's, it's awesome. Next one is Write Sonic. This is my personal favorite. This is one I use every single week, most days of the week. They do have a free trial, but it only gives you six thousand two hundred fifty words. And once that's up, it's up. So if you use them in the one day, you get one day of use on it. Um, after that, it starts at $10 a month, which is not that bad for 30,000 words. And this is one of the reasons why I like them. They've also got a quality index. So the more you up the quality, so if you go that I want premium quality, good is very good, I want good, premium quality, um, it goes up a little bit more. So if we look in and it write Sonic, again, you've got all these different styles of things you're going to write. So let's just say, for instance, um, um, again, blog writing. The AI article 3.0 is excellent. It is amazing. This thing is going to be cool. Let's just write about something like um, growing a small business um, with uh, growing a small business with no cash and just a dream, with no cash and just a good idea. So, then, so that's what I start with. It's now going to generate some ideas based on that topic. So it goes through these steps, how to grow a small business with no cash or credit and just a good idea. How to grow a small business with no cash and just growing a small business. Okay, I'm going to choose that first one. 
So it's now going to say, I'm going to generate an intro to this blog. So we're now generating that intro. Here we go. So there you go, it starts off, you don't need money to launch a business, it gives you another one. If you're reading this, it means you're a small business owner with big ambitions. Next one, in the first few years of starting a business, you feel like you're playing a game of chicken with fate. Look, I like that beginning, I'm gonna take that one. It's gonna begin my blog with that. Now what it's gonna do is generate the outlines of the different sections of this blog. So it's gonna have, come up with you know different points. So okay, okay, get free labor, I don't like the idea of that. Use free resources, partner with friends and family, use paid advertising, build your audience before you launch, crowdsource. Okay, this sounds pretty really cool. Be scrappy and innovative, network, network, network. That sounds cool. That's going to write now. So now I've selected what the sections are going to be. It's now going to write those sections for me. So this is one of the most complete copywriting tools I've ever seen is why I use it. So I'm going to write the article now. It's going to be the whole article, including a leading photo. Not that it's a great selection of photo, but it writes a whole article for you, about 1,500 words. And it's going to, you could pretty much take the article and copy and paste it. I wouldn't because there's always going to be things that don't quite fit or don't quite sound right, especially in Australian English when it's throwing Zs instead of Ss, that kind of thing, and spelling mum with an O instead of with a U. So you're going to have to be very careful with um, what it outputs and to make sure it actually fits into what you want to do. But first, let's see what it comes up with. Let's see what the article is going to be when it comes out here. So it's now generated our draft article, thrown in a photo at the top. So I don't really need that. We'll leave it in there for now. It starts off with that first area, the intro that it said it was going to do. First few, few years of starting my business, I feel like you're playing a game of chicken and fate. Then the first point was, see, build your own audience before you launch. It writes a paragraph on that, even before you start a new business, even before you start building an audience that will help you launch quickly. So the problem is there, it's repeated pretty much the same idea there as it has in the last sentence. So with only four sentences in a paragraph, I'd want to explain or expand on that. What I generally do is I will pull out that and I'll start writing an example on my own. So I said, for example, when I sat down on... January 1, 2022, and decided that I wanted to stop paying so much for ads. So what I, I use this for is it introduces the idea, then I put a personal example in after that. So it doubles the length of it. Same down here, crowdsourced to buy time and credibility. So in this case, is going for platforms that raise money. I would say um, I worked with a client who used Kickstarter to get going it let them it enabled them to get a load of cash to develop their idea into a prototype so then i go and give a little bit more into that story network 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 i can then go yep i began my network networking experience with bni on the gold coast way back in 2017 when I was new to business and new to my particular industry. So you can see how I'm, I'm taking that it gives you the, the idea and the facts and then you add your own perspective on it. And I think that's an important thing to do in here because after all that, you're going to get a whole blog post that's almost written for you. All you need to do is just go in there, check to make sure the information makes sense then add your own, add your own perspective in here. And that really then makes it a completely plagiarism free and interesting story, not just about facts and figures and what, you know, what it is you're writing about, but you add your perspective and your story in there as well. You don't have to go on and on and on. Um, I could write you know, basically the same amount of space as that, which is what, four sentences. I can add another four sentences in there about my networking experience, about the journey from being very nervous to being very easily able to do it. So that's the article writer that's on, uh, on Write Sonic. Another area where I use it is in they've got a very new project. So let's just say this is, um, it's going to create the, 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 um, you go in there, you get to generate free photos and images related to what you want to write about. So if I'm going to go to their website, it's now called Photosonic. 
you can write in a range of different things that are going to design a piece of art or some kind of photorealistic representation of what you're saying. So I'm going to say, um, woman at a networking function laughing with a glass of champagne in her hand. So I'm going to, that's the photo I might want for my article. So let's generate that photo to see what it comes up with. And this is a, an extension of the AI writers. And this is a whole different technology coming under a thing called Dal E, D A L L slash E. So look, the faces are a bit funny. <laughs> it's a bit funny, but you actually are seeing a woman laughing at a networking function with a glass of champagne. So it's not the point yet where it's so photorealistic that it's going to be like, you could probably use her. She just looks scary. And that one, yeah, that's like completely out of there. So you can generate photos that can go with these things. I don't know whether you'd use these photos particularly, but interesting how it's generated a photo that's very photorealistic um, that matches exactly what I was saying. So I can like, um, that woman at a networking function might be a bit better. Um, or maybe saying behind a woman at a networking function. So then you've got something, I'll just want a networking function will do. So these ones aren't quite as scary. Still got some scary faces on them, but the idea is that they they want them not to be too much like a real person because they don't want to be painting a photo of a real person. They want to actually generate a human face that's kind of, um, let's say, you're sitting behind a woman at a networking function. Might be a little better, so we don't get the faces, but we do not want the faces. Faces are scaring us. So here we go. So there, that, that one's good. So these kind of things which don't then show faces are an original photo that's been drawn up by the AI. This one here is deliberately got someone show, showing a face. This guy looks a bit like a China doll. Again, we've got one here, which could be you know, a photo of anyone at a networking function. So it does produce some pretty good photos if you just don't have faces shown. So where the faces are, but things tend to go really wrong. Uh, this is a free tool, by the way. So it's something which they're offering for free um, for now. I think eventually they're going to have an unlimited version that allows you to do more. So before we finish up, I might look at one other area, maybe something like a, um, a product description. So if we look around here and look for e-commerce, looking for a product description. So what we're going to do is the product is going to be, um, it's going to be green tea powder. Um, it's going to be um, full of antioxidants. Uh, put something in there. It's going to be um, finely ground. It's going to be um, flavored with coconut. And I don't see what flavor we're going to have in here, but now. Um, and it's going to be a tone of voice that is kind of, let's just say, engaging. So we can create this product description of green tea powder. You might be selling at your website. And it's, here's the features. Now we want to write a thing. Green tea is known for its antioxidants, which are great for your health. Our green tea powder is fine ground, a flavoring coconut and milk, make it perfect for adding to your favorite drinks and recipes. So immediately it's generated three great ideas to, to add to your product descriptions that are unique, not shown anywhere else with any other green tea powder people. And you're able to have something unique. It's not plagiarized and it's, pretty engaging, like looking for a way to add some antioxidants to your diet, but no further than green, green tea powder. So it's got really engaging, asking questions, giving you suggestions, adding to favorite drinks or recipes, add some pep to your step, all those kind of things. So it's adding really creative ways of making your product description seem a little bit more clear. So, wow, we've made it to the point where we've understood that there is a lot of these on simplemarketing.ai, writer, and then you've got Jasper.ai and Right Sonic. Now, Right Sonic's pricing, uh, we come down here. There you go. They've got a, uh, a free bit that allows you just a limited amount of words. So that allows you, I think, 6,250 words per month. So that's not a lot when you think about it, but it's a great place to start. Then the pricing goes up to $10 a month US, which is not really much for a great tool. I pay a little bit extra for it because I use it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, because I don't have time to be coming up with all those. I did promise you a little bit of a look at my workflow. So what I'll do, I've got another tool called UpContent that I use to generate ideas for topics I'm going to write on. 
So the first one was say, let's say I'm going to write about LinkedIn. I click on LinkedIn over on the left or up on the top, and it gives me a bunch of stories around the internet that's about LinkedIn. So for instance, I might just go, okay, um, when branding yourself, avoid this mistake. I think it's a really good idea. So I might go into then Photosonic, uh, to write Sonic and go, I want to write something about an article about uh, mistakes to avoid with personal branding. And then it'll give me the ideas to write about that. So that's often where I'll get those ideas from. And then I'll be able to write something, okay, 10 mistakes, maybe not 10, I might change that to five. So I change to five and go generate five intros or five intros for five mistakes to avoid your personal branding. And then that will start to develop around the idea of what kind of article I'm going to write. So it gives me the opening again. I go, yep, I've got those. Um, so I just generate those intros again. So I just click the wrong button. And then finally, come on, we can do it. Let's pick that one and then generate the outlines for the story that I'm going to write. So it's going to say what those five specific uh, mistakes are. So there you go. One, two, three, four, five, and then an X, and then a part of the end. So I've got now my five areas it's going to write about. I generate the, the actual draft article, add my personal experiences to it. And we've got a really great um, way of doing it. So my, my workflow really is just getting your ideas from other places. Uh, other places to get great ideas from? Comments on your social posts, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. People will give you ideas that are really, really cool and give you um, the ideas of what they want to hear more about. Um, also, your competitors. Go and see what your competitors are talking about and then talk about those same topics, but in your own way. That's how you generate the ideas to go into these tools to begin that process of, of, of writing some really cool, unique, and engaging stuff that's not going to come across as the same as everybody else's stuff in the same old way. So that is it for today. I hope you really got something really good out of that and you're able to use these tools a bit more with a bit more purpose and intent. Not be quite scared of them because they're really just taking your instructions and expanding your ideas out. So you have a little bit of time saving and you're certainly able to write a lot more stuff than what you were previously. My name is Don Tyson James. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I really hope you learned a lot. I'm sorry about the audio quality jumping in and out. Um, my microphone tends to have a bit of a problem at the back of it that I need to fix. But thank you. Have a great day. And if you do need this, you'll see it later on on YouTube as well. Thank you and good afternoon.